In section 5.2, we're going to look at integers and orders of operations. Now, in our previous video, we talked a bit about natural numbers, and we mentioned that there are the positive integers starting at 1 and continuing on. The idea of whole numbers just adds in one additional value. Whole numbers are natural numbers plus 0. So we would just call this maybe all the non-negative integers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and continuing on. If we just want to reference all the integers, whether positive, negative, or 0, we would just call it the integers. And that's all the negative integers, the value 0, and all the positive integers. Now if we're referencing this in a number line and we're asked to graph these values on a number line, so 3, 0, 1 half, negative 1, negative 4, 6, 10, and negative 2, we would start with our number line. And since 0 is one of our numbers, let's graph 0 first. So I'll put 0 in the middle because negative numbers would come before, positive numbers would come after. And in terms of our negative numbers, we've got negative 1, negative 4, and negative 2. Now, the, in terms of where to place these three negative numbers, think of negative 1 as being 1 unit to the left of 0. That's the idea of negative 1. It's distance 1 away from 0, but since it's negative, it's in the left direction. So negative 2 is 2 units away from 0 in the left direction. So we see that as the numbers get farther away from 0, they become negative 2 larger and larger numbers. So negative 4 is negative 4 units away from 0 in the left direction. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've plotted all of our values that are less than 0. Let's continue with the values that are greater than 0. So that would be for our values here. We're now going to graph the positive value 3, the positive value 1 half, 6, and 10. Now 1 half is between 0 and 1, so we might mark that as our 1 half point here. 3 would be 3 units away from 0. 6 would be 6 units away from 0. And then 10 would be some other units, 10 units away from 0. So here we've graphed the points given on a number line where the values are increasing as we go to the right. Next we're going to introduce the idea of inequalities. Reading this from left to right, we would read this as x is less than y. And the way you know where the less than goes, do we see the point of the angle? The smaller part of it is pointing to the x. So the points part points to the smaller number. So since the point is towards the x, we know x is less than y. Our next inequality has the point pointing towards y, so y is the smaller number. So we could phrase that as, since y is smaller, x is greater than y. Or its alternate form, y is less than x. Both of these are just different ways to state the same idea. Now look at the similarity between our first inequality and our third. Do we see the only difference here is that we've got a or equal to symbol here. That extra line represents x is less than or equal to. So x is less than or equal to y. Similarly, our second and fourth statement are similar, except this line here means the fourth statement is x is greater than or equal to y. So based on this notation, how would we write 5 is less than 8? So 5 is the smaller number, so we would want the angle to be pointing towards a smaller number. x is greater than or equal to negative 5. The or equal to means I'm going to have one of these two right. So I've got x. I've got negative 5, and what do we know about x? It's greater. So the point is going away from x, but since it's greater than or equal to, we also have the line there as well. So let's look at these statements and determine whether they're true or false. I think this would be a good opportunity for everybody to pause the video and attempt each of these on their own. Unpause to check your work, mark them as true or false. So going through these, we see that 6 
not being equal to 6, that's false. 6 is equal to 6. 3 is equal to 9, that's also false. But the next one is true because the square root of 9, if you type this into your calculator, the square root of 9 is actually 3. So this is just referencing 3 in a different format. So 3 is equal to the square root of 9 because the square root of 9 is 3. So whenever you see a complicated expression like this or this, I recommend you would take a moment to simplify that first with your calculator so that you can actually compare what the statement is saying. So this would be true. Now for our next one, the square root of 100 is less than or equal to 20. Well, unless we know what the square root of 100 is, this is going to be harder to determine. So typing into our calculator, the square root of 100 is 10. So this is really the statement 10 is less than 20. And we know that is a true statement. 10 is smaller than 20. Our next statement, 35 is bigger than 20. That is also true. 12 is less than or equal to 12. This is only true because it includes the or equal to symbol, so we are allowed for them to be equal, so that is true. Is 5 less than negative 3? That is false. Every negative number is smaller than any positive number. Is negative 2 less than 0? That is true. Is 0 less than 5? That is true. Is 2 less than 2? That is false because 2 is equal to 2. To be less than means you've got to be strictly less than. Now some notation we might want to be aware of is absolute value. If I say absolute value of a number, I would draw vertical bar, number vertical bar, and this just means make anything inside the absolute value positive. So if it's already positive, leave it alone. If it's negative, turn it positive. So for instance, the absolute value of 4 is just 4. But the absolute value of negative 4 becomes its opposite in the positive direction, which is positive 4. Now in this next statement, do we see it's negative times the absolute value of 4? So it's like you have to figure out what the absolute value of 4 is and then apply the negative symbol. And just a small aside, when we see this negative, that's the same as negative 1 times that value, if that helps us see this a bit better. We know the absolute value of 4 is just positive 4 that you then have to multiply by the negative 1. So this would actually give us negative 4. And here again we see the issue where first we need to simplify what's inside the absolute value and then apply the negative. So we would get the absolute value of negative 12 is 12. And then we were asked to apply the negative. Notice now I'm using parentheses. I've dropped the absolute value because I found the absolute value of negative 12. So that would be negative 12. Now for our next one, before we can evaluate it, do we see that I need to figure out what is 8 minus 3 first before I try to figure out the absolute value of that? So first you're going to simplify the interior. 8 minus 3 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is just 5. So for our next example, why don't you take a moment and pause the video, attempt this on your own, and then unpause to check your work negative times the absolute value of 9 minus 4. So we need to simplify the interior. So we have the negative is just waiting on the outside till the inside is simplified. 9 minus 4 is 5. So it's the absolute value of 5. Now the absolute value of 5 is just positive 5. Then we then apply the negative, so we would get negative 5 as our answer there. And one thing to keep in mind, if you've ever got minus a negative, that just becomes a positive. So for instance, minus a negative 3 just becomes positive 3. You can think of this as maybe the double negative rule, two negatives make a positive. So if we're looking at minus negative 5, that's the double negative, that would make it a positive 5. 3 minus negative 8 is the same as 3 plus 8, so two minuses make a positive, which would give us 11. Now it's important to realize that exponents are repeated multiplication. So if I say 2 cubed, that's the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times itself 3 times, which would give us the value 8. Now in most people's calculator, I believe the exponent button would be something like this. So to evaluate this in your calculator, you would do 2 this button, 3, 
enter and you would get eight. So you can practice that to make sure you know where the exponent button is in your calculator. Let's practice some evaluating exponents. So when we have negative six squared, the key thing is that you realize this whole negative six is what's being squared. So that means we have repeated multiplication, negative six times negative six. Negative times negative becomes positive, and that's why we get positive 36. And if you want to type this into your calculator, you must type the parentheses first because that tells your calculator the whole negative six is what's being squared, which would be quite different than six being squared and then applying a negative. So to type this into your calculator, you do parentheses, negative six, close parentheses, exponent two, and then press enter and you get 36. Whereas our next example, notice there's no parentheses, so this is implied that it's negative times six squared. So it's saying square the six first and then apply the negative. So if we do this, six squared is 36, and then when we apply the negative, we get a negative 36. So watch out for this, because there's a very small difference in notation, but we see the values are completely different. One is positive, whereas one is negative. So if there are specific parentheses, that means that whole thing inside the parentheses is being raised to the exponent, whereas if there's no parentheses, you just assume the number itself is being raised to the exponent, and then you have to follow through with the next uh, operations. So why don't you take a moment to find the remaining values on the right side. Let's pause the video, find these values, and then unpause to check your work. Now we could just type this into our calculator, parentheses, negative five, close parentheses, exponent three. When you do that, you would get a negative 125, or you could do negative five times negative five times negative five, that is negative five cubed, and either way we get negative 125. Now for negative two to the fourth, you could type that in as parentheses, negative two, close parentheses, exponent fourth. And in that case, we would get a positive 16, which would be the same as negative 2 times itself four times. Now, we're about to combine our ideas that we've been practicing into a little bit more complicated problems. But first, let's take a small sidetrack to orders of operations. Now, if you would like more practice talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers, I recommend you would go to page 266 through 272 of the textbook. They offer a lot of great examples that just help us review how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. Let's continue on to uh, orders of operations. A good way to remember what to do first when simplifying an expression is this PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which stands for the P is parentheses. E is exponent, M is multiply, D is divide, A is add, and S is subtract. So whenever we're simplifying complicated expressions, we would first simplify anything inside the parentheses, then apply any exponents that are written, then multiply, divide, add, and subtract. And one thing to keep in mind is these can generally be switched based on the problem. So you could either divide or multiply first, subtract or add first. So in our last example from these notes, we're asked to use order of operations to simplify each expression. Take a moment for our first example and try to see what operations are listed in words. How would you describe them? I would say we've got addition right where we're adding this term plus this term. And then within that, do you see that we have multiplication. The second term is being multiplied. So if I think back to the PEMDAS, I know I need to multiply before I add. So I'm going to simplify this as 5 plus, and then 3 times 4 needs to be simplified first, so that's going to be 12 in our calculator. Now that the right side has been simplified, we can add that to 5, and we would get 17 as our answer there. So why don't you look at our next example 
and write down all the order of operations that you see, specifically what operations in what order. Unpause the video when you're ready to hear the discussion. So here I see that we have multiplication, an exponent, addition, subtraction, parentheses, and within the parentheses, addition. So thinking through PEMDAS, we know we need to deal with parentheses first. So we need to simplify what is 2 plus 7. That's inside the parentheses. That would be 9. So I'm just going to keep rewriting everything that I'm not dealing with yet. But we were subtracting what's inside the parentheses. That's really subtracting 9. So the parentheses are taken care of. Next comes exponents in the list of PEMDAS. So 3 squared. That is 9. So we want to simplify what is 3 squared. That's 9. So that's going to take its place. Keep rewriting things until we're ready to deal with it. Now the next highest thing that we need to deal with on the list is this multiplication here. 4 times 9. That would be 36. That we were adding to 7. And then subtracting by 9. So at this point you could add first or subtract whatever you prefer. And I believe in this case we would get to the value 36 plus 7 minus 9, 34. So in our last example, I recommend you take a moment to pause the video and attempt it on your own. Unpause when you're ready to check your work or see the solution. Now as I look through this example, I like to think about what operations do I see? I see a division, parentheses, subtraction, subtraction, multiplication, multiplication. Here it's implied multiplication. When you've got one number written by another number, that's implied multiplication and subtraction. Now there's no exponents or anything like that, but the first thing we would do is deal with these parentheses on the top. And these parentheses here are representing multiplication, not anything complicated inside the parentheses. Notice there's no operation, it's just negative 2, whereas this is actually telling us to do something, 8 minus 13. So whatever you're not simplifying, you just keep rewriting. 8 minus 13 is negative 5, that we are subtracting from 10 times 4. So we dealt with the parentheses. Next, I would say let's deal with the multiplication. Let's simplify this and this term in the top and bottom. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And also, this is multiplication as well. 10 times 4, that would give us 40. All divided by 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 minus 3. Let's deal with this subtraction to get the top as a symbol term. The bottom is a simple term. So this is one thing I would say we need to simplify this before we divide because actually what's happening here is there's implied parentheses. Simplify this first and this first before you divide. So that's why in this case before you divide in a fraction get the top completely simplified and get the bottom completely simplified. So that would be negative 50 divided by negative 13. Negative divided by negative becomes a positive. And we get 50 over 13 as our answer. And for instance, if you were asked to type it as a decimal, the way you'd figure out that decimal value is you would just divide 15 by 30, and you would round to however many decimal places it asked. So you can always check what's the decimal version by typing the fraction into your calculator. So as before, remember we do have textbook homework problem assigned at the end of every section. Now there are a lot of problems here, but a lot of them are very quick, sometimes just true or false, looking at a statement to determine if it's correct or not. And this is great practice because you can check every problem in the back of your book because they're all odd. Remember, if you have questions, feel free to send me pictures of your work and I'll be happy to offer feedback. 